Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, depending on when you're watching this video. In this video, we're going to work through the summary exercise given on slide 28 of lecture set 11. So this summary ex exercise is going to go over all of the different calculations and interpretations that we discussed in lecture set 11, or that were discussed in lecture set 11. Okay, so we have the following scenario, or the following data sets. Um, this data set gives the square footage um, of nine custom homes and their selling price in thousands of dollars, right? So for example, the first value would be 2,600 square feet home, which sold for $540,000. So this is probably older data and not Canadian values. Um, we have... For this data set, the following sets of summary statistics. So we have the sum of xi, the sum of xi squared, the sum of yi, the sum of yi squared, and the sum of x times y. Part A, we want to compute the least squares regression equation. All right. So in order to do this, what we have, so this is our least squares regression equation. yi hat is equal to b0 plus b1 xi. Okay, so our objective is to compute B0 and B1. And once we have B0 and B1, we can plug them into that simple equation or the SL, the, the, uh, the least squares regression equation. So B1 is SXY divided by SXX. Okay? And B0 is Y bar minus B1 X bar, all right? So we need to work out all these different components. Obviously we need to get B1 first because we need it for B0, all right? So S X Y is the sum from I equals one to N of X I Y I minus the sum from I equals one to N of X I multiplied by the sum from i equals one to n of yi divided by n. All right, so from the previous slide, this is going to be 169,993 minus, and then we need our two sums, 270 and 5,552. Okay, and then only this part is going to be divided by n. And this should give us 3,433. All right. So just keep in mind when you're doing this calculation, you want to do this part first and then subtract. Okay. Um, we need SXX. So this is going to be the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi squared minus the sum i equals 1 to n of xi all squared divided by n. Okay, so from the previous slide, the sum of xi squared is 8,136 minus the sum of xi, which is 270 all squared over 9. Just like with S, X, Y, we want to do this part first and then subtract. And this should give us 216. Okay, so B1 here is going to be 3,433 over 216, which is equal to 15.89352. All right. Okay, now we need to finish off B0. So we need to get Y bar. This is going to be the sum from I equals one to N of YI divided by N. So this is 5,552 over nine, which is 616.89352. Right. 
eight, 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 nine. And then we also need X bar. So this is the sum from I equals one to N of X I over N. So this is going to be 270 over N, which is 30. So B0 is going to be 616.8889 minus 15.89352 multiplied by 30. And that's going to give us 140.0833. Okay, so therefore, our solution here is yi hat is equal to 140.0833 plus 15.89352 multiplied by xi. All right. So this is the solution to part A. When we're asked to compute the uh, least square, when we are asked to compute a least square regression equation, we want to end up with a model like that highlighted or that underlined in red. So in order to get that model, we have to compute the intercept B0 and the slope B1. Okay, part B, interpret the line. All right, so in part B, we're just explaining what the line is telling us. Okay, so we'll start with B0. This is saying, okay, so B0 is the estimated value of Y when X is equal to zero. Okay, so this is the estimated value of YI when XI equals zero. So here, this would be for a home with zero, uh, so, sorry, let's say for a home that is zero square feet, the price is 140,000, 140.8, because uh, we're talking about dollars now, zero eight uh, thousand. Okay, so we'll come back to talk about what this means or does not mean momentarily, but this is telling you that you can buy a house that has no square footage for $140,000. It's obviously a great deal. <laughs> okay, B1. B1 represents the change in um, the price of the home for every additional unit in X. So our X value is square footage. Um, in hundred is a hundred square feet. Okay, so what this is saying to you is that for every additional hundred square feet that you add to the home, that price is going to increase by fifteen point eight nine thousand okay. dollars. So this is saying for each additional one hundred square feet, the price of the home increases by 15.89 thousand dollars. Okay, so basically, for every additional 100 square feet, the price of your home is going to increase by $15,000. Well, almost $16,000 actually in this case, because it's 15.89 thousand. 
part C. So part C asks if B0 is actually meaningful in this example. Okay, so does the intercept have meaning in this example? All right, well, the intercept is telling us that we would have to pay $140,000 for a house that is zero square feet. So a zero square foot house essentially doesn't exist. So they're saying that you'd pay $140,000 for nothing. So this does not make sense in the context of the example. In this context, the intercept does not have meaning because we are being charged for a house that doesn't exist. Okay, so we need to pay attention to the context. In some situations, the intercept will have meaning. In other situations, it will not. In this, in this example, it sh should be clear that it does not have meaning because again, you, you can't have a house that has zero square foot. That would just mean that there is no house. Okay, part D. What is the estimated price of a custom home that is 28 square feet? All right, so here, what we have is let xi equal 28, okay? Our model is yi hat is 140.0833 plus 15.8932xi, okay? So therefore, if we have a 28 square foot home, you would have the following. Five hundred and eighty five thousand uh, one point one zero nine one. So five eight five point one zero nine one. Therefore, a twenty eight hundred square foot home has an estimated cost of 585,000.10 dollars. I guess I could keep using the decimal places actually because you have to account for, yeah, I still have three spots before the, the cent. Okay, part E asks, uh, to calculate and interpret r and r squared. All right, so we can do this in a couple of ways. We'll do the full calculation. So r is equal to sxy over the square root of sxx syy. Okay, so we have sxy and we have sxx. We did those in part A. So syy is the sum from i equals one to n of the yi squared minus the sum from i equals one to n of yi all squared over n. Again, just like before, we wanna do this part first. Okay, so this is going to be um, 300 or 3,504,412. minus um, triple five two squared. Over nine. And this should give us a value of 79,444.89. Okay. 
So if we plug in here, we're going to have 3433 three, three divided by the square root of 216 multiplied by 79,444.89. Okay, and that should give us 0 0.8287. Okay. And then our R squared value, okay, so this can be found in two ways. Like what we can do here is just go 0 0.8287 squared, which gives us 0 0.68 six, uh, eight approximately. So once you have one of the R squared or the R, the other one is very easy to get because they're either the square root or the square of the other. Okay, the other thing we can do if we wanna work it out, this thing is SSR over SST. Okay, so SSR, we know that that value um, from our previous, slide, working all the way back here. From here, SSR is the square root of S, or is SXY squared over SXX, which is actually the square of the slope, right? And then SST is just SYY. Okay. So if we come back here, this thing is SXY squared over SXX divided by S, Y, Y. Okay, so you can actually see the relationship more clearly between the R squared and the R when you write it out this way. But um, if we were to actually follow through on this calculation, we would have 3,344 squared divided by S, X, X, which was 216, which is then divided by S, Y, Y. Okay, so it's a little bit, if we were to do the top part first here, we would end up with um, 5, 4, 5, 6, 2.45 divided by uh, 7,944, 7,000, 79,444.89, which again is 0 0.6868. Okay, so just two different ways of getting there, but I wanted to show the complete calculations. Okay, so here we have an R of 0 0.8287. Okay, so what this is telling us is that there is a strong It, there is a strong positive linear relationship between uh, sale price, or I guess it's just price, but I don't see why it wouldn't sale price, price, they're synonymous, between price and uh, square footage. Okay. So the R, the R value is a value again between negative one and one. One is a perfect linear relationship. Zero is no relationship and negative one is a perfect negative linear relationship. An R of, 82, uh, of 0 0.8287 is quite close to one. So this would imply that the linear relationship is quite strong between these two variables. And because it's a positive number, it just means that it's sloping up, which we would expect because as the size of the house increases, so as the square footage gets bigger, you would expect the price to go up with it. Okay, so for R squared, 0 0.6868, we would say the 
fitted regression line explains 68.68% of the variation in the response variable. Okay, so the last two, F and G. So we want to do the test of no linear relationship, and then we want to construct a 95% CI. All right, so for F, okay, so the first thing we have to do are check the assumptions. It's not stated here, but for this type of material, we're not focused on the assumption checking. So we can just assume these are met. Okay, we're just focused on the hypothesis test in this last unit. All right, so in step one, we have H0, beta one equals zero versus HA, beta one not equal to zero. On step two, we have alpha 0 0.05. On step three, we have um, T is equal to beta one, B one minus beta one over the square root of the estimate over SXX. Okay. So here we need to work out what the standard error of the estimate is in order to compute this. So we have everything except SE. So SE is the square root of SSE over N minus two, okay? SSE is the difference between SST and SSR, okay? So we actually computed these two values in part F. So SST is the same thing as SYY. So that's the 7,000, um, 79,444.89. And the SSR you can see is the numerator of this expression. So here we would just take our two values from our previous calculation of R squared. And we just have to subtract these to get SSE. So SSE is just as written, SST minus SSR, and this will be over nine minus two. Okay, so this gives us 59.62075. So our T value is going to be 15.893. Three five two divided by fifty nine point six two zero seven five over the square root of SXX. Okay, and the square root of SXX, which we calculated before, is two sixteen. So this gives us a test statistic of 3.918. Okay. All right, so on step four, we can take a critical value approach. So here the degree of freedom is N minus two, which is seven. Okay, we can sketch out our little T curve here. So we're going to test in both the upper and lower tail. So these are both T values on alpha over two n minus two. So these are 0 0.025 and seven. And this down here is negative 0 0.025 and seven. Okay, so alpha over two, because it's a two tailed test. So we go back here. Um, we have seven degrees of freedom, 0 0.025. So 
So that gives us 2.365. So our critical value for this test is negative 2.365 and 2.365. Okay. All right, and then our test statistic is 3.3. 918, so you can see that this is inside the rejection region, so we can reject the null. And then if we take the p-value approach, um, so this is a two-tailed test, right? So we'll have our p-value. I'll sketch out my little T curve here, something like this. This is centered at zero. So I'm gonna have T is equal to 3.918. Down here, I'll have T is equal to negative 3.918. So I have this here, I have this here. Okay, so then my P value is the probability, or sorry, is two times the probability that T exceeds 3.918. All right, when I go back to my T table, I scroll across my degree of freedom line here. I'm looking for 3.918, which is larger than the largest listed value. So therefore, in each tail, I have less than 0 0.005 of the area. Okay, so I can say here, since this thing, this probability is less than 0 0.005, then the p-value is less than 0 0.01. Okay, so then on step five, regardless of the approach I take, I'm going to reject H0. So if I take the critical value approach, I reject because the test stat is in the rejection region. And if I take the p-value approach, I reject because my p-value is less than alpha. So then I can say at the 5% significance level, the data provide sufficient evidence to suggest that a linear relationship exists between um, square footage and price, right? So in this case, I've just found evidence that this relationship exists. Okay, I'm part G, I wanna compute the 95% interval. Um, the assumptions are the same as in part H, E, F, G, or part E, part F, sorry. Um, so we don't, these are, we're just going to assume this is true. Okay, so it's a 95% interval. So we have alpha 0 0.05. Okay, so this means that our T value is going to be a T on 0 0.025 and 7. So this is the same critical value that we used above, 2.365. Okay, so our interval is B1 plus or minus our T value multiplied by SE over the square root of SXX. So we're gonna have 15.89352 plus or minus 2.365 multiplied by 
uh, 59.62075 divided by the square root of 216. So this gives me 15.89352 plus or minus uh, 9.594 zero four five which returns six point three zero zero or sorry six point two double nine to twenty five point four eight eight okay so then I can say we are 95% confident that the price of a home increases by 6.299 to 25.488 thousand dollars for each additional 100 square feet. Okay, so my interval is telling me the uh, how I expect the Y value to change for each additional 100 square feet. So every time you add 100 square feet to the house, you can expect that price to increase by roughly $6,300 to $25,500. All right. So as always, if you have any other questions, um, please let me know.